Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. You know, in today's age, you can't just have boring photos on your property marketing listings. You've got to have a virtual walkthrough tour. That way tenants can quickly qualify themselves and look through the property even at two in the morning online. But I can hear you say, look Darren, it's too expensive with cameras and takes too long. That's why you've got to go to virtualtourscreator.com.au and check out how you can do walkthrough virtual tours using your mobile phone. Go and check it out. Also, talk to Tom there at virtualtourscreator.com.au on how you can quickly turn your tours into really cheap floor plans as well. Take care. Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. I am with Dennis Youssef and of course, Michael Sands. Say hello guys. G'day. G'day, how you going? And we are doing the PM Performance Podcast Series. And I guess for everyone, we've got so many different podcast series. We've got The Secret Shopper Files, we've got BDM Coach, we've got PM Growth Expert Show, PM Power. They all serve different needs. And I guess we, we just didn't want to do a podcast series um, just for no reason. I mean, we don't want to start up another podcast series, uh, you know, just for the sake of it, because we've got a lot already. But I guess, Dennis and Michael, this is, you know, where we need to jump in here. We've seen a real problem in offices around team performance. Now, we've got this vision of mm. we want offices pumping with their growth. We want to see strong net growth happening in offices. We want to see business values really, really strong. We want to see really good quality fee income that they're earning per property and how to deal with all of those discounters in the market effectively, how to have strong points of difference. But we are seeing a real hindrance to that, aren't we? Well, Darren, I mean, as everyone knows, you know, our, our key is growth, right? Um, you know, and streamlining businesses for growth and, you know, maximising their fees all in one. You know, it, it's not easy when you've got an agency that um, that give you a call, they ring you up and say, hey, I, I want to grow my business. And you do a quick background check yourself, <clears throat> Facebook, Google, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. And you already recognise that, you know, they're not going to be the ideal client, but you've got to look at the opportunities that we can present for them. We can't just go in there and, and jump into growth. We've got, to, we've got to work on fixing so many other avenues so we can um, build their worth, show them that they are a good agency. Uh, and before we can show them they're a good agency, we've got to fix things. Yeah. So hence why we're here today. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're all really passionate about this PM performance and, and team performance to reach those goals. Michael, I, I want to swing over to you because in our director's chat between us in the last few days, you've really wanting us to grab hold of the theme of, of wealth. Tell us about that. I think that it's really easy for business owners to lose sight of why they got into, you know, running a business. Um, you know, it's great they're wanting a steady stream of income, but what's the end What's the end game? And we see it in sales. The reason why people are in sales is because they want to make money and sales agents want to, want to make money, buy nice houses and, and so on. But as we see, there's a lot of property management business owners out there that, appear to just um, be pulling their hair out, stressing, focusing on the real micro aspects of the business and not really realizing that there's a lot more opportunity out there to grow the business and build a valuable asset whilst also enjoying a good income stream. Um, but people get caught up on the nitty gritty and they just get burnt out. Like We see it mm -hmm. mm -hmm. week in, week out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you said the nitty gritty and for myself, having been a trainer and consultant now and doing like business health checks where we actually go into the bowels of a team into the office there and really look at the issues that, that hold them back. This is what we want this podcast series to really be about because the end goal is we want your team healthy. We want your business strong. We want to see a great price sold. And the businesses I've worked with in the past, I've seen um, record prices when the property, you know, the business gets sold because of the work that was done and making sure they've got quality fee income and the team is structured right for growth and all of those sort of things. And But what we want to talk about in this podcast series is the things that hinder 
and the solutions to that. So you can take this information and surge ahead with your team because we know you want what we want uh, we want you to have. We want to see you pumping. We want to see quality. We want to see wealth. We want to see everyone happy in the team and the team growing and the business strong. So with that in mind, we're going to start off with one of the biggest issues and hindrances to that happening and it's staff turnover. Uh, property managers burning out. There is no secret. And for many, many, many years, it, the biggest reason why property managers leave the industry or leave a business is because of burnout. They just have enough and they, and they leave. And before we get into the key reasons that cause staff turnover and burnout, let's just focus on um, you know, the high staff turnover costs. You know, what are the costs? Now, for business owners and managers and, and senior property managers, that's really who this podcast is for. You know, we really need to, we've got um, unsustainable staff turnover happening. We need to listen. We need to go, what are we doing wrong? And what do we need to change? Because the consequences of high staff turnover, property managers burning out is huge. And I think the first real problem, let's just put on the table, Michael, how much does it cost to recruit a new a new staff member, what, what what are the actual direct costs involved? Well, if you go through a recruitment agency, which we see some people do, they charge you between like nine percent and fourteen percent. So if you are doing that, you really got to make sure you negotiate. But even still, if you're paying out six, seven, eight thousand dollars to recruit someone, that that's a lot of it's a lot of money, and you don't always get the right person. Right, but you know, recruiters are out there trying to headhunt. You know, they're trying to get out, get out there, and go through LinkedIn and see the people that are visible there. Doesn't necessarily mean they're the best, but it's such an expense. Um, if you go without a recruiter, you know, you go on Seek, you go on other, you know, job seeking websites, it costs you a couple hundred bucks there. But then there's time and stress, and then it gets to the point where there's not enough people because they want too high a salary, and then you're trying to weigh up: do you do you pay someone? you know, 20% more than the last person to do 30% less, All right? It's, it's that perpetual nego- self-negotiation and it's, mm-hmm. just a, it's just a headache. Yeah, it, it is a headache. It, it, there's no doubt about it. It's a, it's a reactive cost that you probably haven't budgeted for that you really don't need at the moment and you don't want. And as you said, you may not get the right person, which means you have to go through all of that again. Now, hopefully the recruitment company gives you some type of credit if it happens within the first three months or whatever, but still you want to avoid high staff turnover. And at the end of the day, happy staff stay. Let's just get to the truth of this. Happy staff realize the grass is greener where I am um, and I don't want to go elsewhere. But if we're not creating a good environment, then the opposite is true. They do want to move on. All right. The next issue is, you know, when a person's leaving, um, a, a new person necessarily hasn't been found and they're not starting. So other team members have to jump in and help to fill that position with the issues going on, which just creates massive strain for the team because they're already busy enough in their own portfolio. Now they have to be looking after someone else's portfolio. So this damages and takes away from the team. It erodes them. It causes an erosion of their, their um, you know, the, it causes stress, it causes anxiety, um, and it, it causes pain. Um, and it takes away goodwill, it causes disillusionment because they now feel that they haven't got a life as well. So, it, you know, it really does, um, you know, damage a team as well. Yeah, I think, I think here too that um, we see time in, time out when there is that transition of staff and other staff members step in to help, <clears throat> they normally absorb some of those tasks in perpetuity. So they keep kind of stepping in and doing some of those assisting tasks. And then those other tasks, those other um, team members, feel the burnout because they're doing above and beyond what they signed up to do. Now, the other side here, the other flip side is, are the staff in general busy being over busy? Are they being mm-hmm. efficient at what they're doing? Are they using the time to the highest and best use they could be doing? Probably not, which is causing further burnout because they think I've got so much on my plate, such and such has now left, and now I've got to take on their task. They've got another 150, 200 properties 
but their role probably isn't efficient either. And so that's that's causing further stress and, and burnout. Pain. Yeah, it's more pain. And and also, are they the right fit for each position as well? You know, um, some like, for example, if, um, not all property managers make a good BDM. You know, um, yeah. not not all um, PMs make a good leasing agent, or or vice versa. You know, thinking. You know, and it's interesting. So many times, you, you we we look at offices, and it's the front of house person that was sitting at the front office manning the phones all of a sudden thrown into property management, you know? So it, it's, you know, having the right people in the right position for the right role as well. I know? think that creates massive burnout that affects everyone as well because the right person's not in the right position. I think the other question is, would the person in the current job now have been hired if the ideal, if the ideal candidate was available? So how many business owners are actually settling with the person they hire you know, because they can't find the ideal person they want. Subsequently, that person isn't as qualified or as um, trained or upskilled and hasn't been given the opportunity in the role to be upskilled, mm. right, which is causing further stress because they're not prepared to take that role either. And then when they're thrown into a deep end, straight away they're suffering burnout. There's the, the excitement from when they've started that new role. But some business owners that, you know, are too small to really help. They want someone who can hit the ground running. That person just isn't quite there yet. Yeah. And they're not getting the training or, or the guidance. Or, yeah. or, or Michael, to add to that, um, potentially the, the property management division is thrown in the back corner and they're just happy that, that the Band-Aid's been done right, that the job's been filled. So they're not, you know, they and they don't see the disruption that's going on. But then on. there's that blame game. Oh, that's Dennis's job. Why isn't Dennis doing? Dennis was employed to do that. Oh, that he's frustrating. He was brought on to be a BDM or a property manager. He's not even filing that report how it's meant to be filed. He should know this. I, I do remember when I was working at Integrity um, end of financial year, everyone was given X amount of properties each to go do a, a, an audit file. And uh, do you think I did it? <laughs> Everyone That's- was like, Dennis hasn't done his. Guys, you do not want me doing this stuff. I'm out here prospecting winning business and you want me to share the load over here? You but that's know? the other thing that happens, right? The, the team are going to be nice to your face thinking, oh, this is the Band-Aid. You, you, you'll be okay. Just ask me if you've got any questions. Back to the wall. Um, mm. They're nice to your face. They're behind your back. That's, oh, my gosh, Dennis, he's not doing, he's not contributing. He's not doing that. And then you get all this negative animosity, which is further fueling burnout. Yeah. Sorry, Darren, I've taken that on. That's all right. Let's let's keep on moving on with this. So we know that it takes away from the bank account. We've got recruitment Mm -hmm. costs. We know it takes away from the team. It erodes the team because it impacts the team having to fill the gap. But also now it erodes and impacts the goodwill and trust that we have of our clients. And because there's nothing like a new property manager starting and hi, Mr. Smith, and him saying, you know, not another property manager, you know, and this is what happens with high staff turnover. It impacts your business in so many different ways. There's only so many hits that your business can take before you start suffering damage. And now you're in continuous reactory mode because lost lost client trust, they want stability. They want peace of mind. They want to be able to put their head on the pillow at night, not having to think about their properties. But if they've got staff turning over, they know their property history. A lot of it's in that property manager's head. It's left. Now they don't know what they're in for with a new property manager. And the end result of this, of too much staff turnover, is owners have enough and they pull their properties. And now we've got more financial bleeding because every property, let's say on average, Michael, how much is every property worth to the rent roll asset? What would be the sale price of that one listing in a rent roll sale? Oh, I've used three times multiple. Let's say a property brings in, you know, just, Pulling a figure, thousand dollars a year in management fees, so it's worth three thousand dollars. And, and that's greatly under. We know it's probably three to five grand higher in other areas. Right. We've got yep. more turnover, but then you got the lost fee income as well. You know, let's say mm-hmm. it's two thousand dollars a year, all fees, management fees, leasing fees, add-ons, and so forth. It's a huge amount of money. So we're putting again out there to the people listening to this podcast: you don't want staff turnover. 
happy staff don't leave. So we need to be focusing on how can we make our businesses strong and healthy because um, staff turnover is a poison. We don't want to allow our team members to burn out. Let's just keep on going because... Oh, Tom, before you go on, just to add to that, Darren, because yes. what tends to happen, the boss will come in, he's seeing staff that are leaving, he sees that there's disruption going on. And, and, and one of the staff members said, oh, we need to get this app or we need to get this software. We need, and they keep adding. And before you know it, not only they're not earning enough money per property, but they're also paying too much in subscriptions yes. to all these things because they need to, to um, you know, like they go paperless. So they, they might get inspection manager. Then they need um, to, to streamline their leasing department. So they get inspect real estate or they need to streamline the whatever. And they keep adding and adding and adding where they, if they just focused on looking back, looking at themselves, they could also, I'm not saying don't do those things. They are important and they're valuable um, tools to have, but it's not just about adding something. It's about looking back sometimes. Yeah. I, I think we need to put it on the table. We know there's probably 10% of rent rolls that are doing really well. They're pumping, they're growing, they help, the team's really healthy. The other 90% are in some way got tangles in them, tangles, mm. problems, um, and issues that need to be sorted. And that's where, again, in the past where we've gone in, done business health checks on them, be able to examine, look at exactly what these tangled issues are because every business has different issues that need to be looked at individually, pulled apart, and then looked at, okay, what steps do we have to do to take it to that top 10%? So let's just get into, again, the biggest reasons for property manager burnout, staff turnover, um, and I have to put this on the table and for the people listening, if we don't get this one right, all of the other things just don't matter. Because if we don't get this one right, we can't get any of the other things right. This is one of the, well, probably the biggest issue that causes staff turnover. Um, a bit of watershed probably on this one for a lot of people listening. And that is business owners treating their property management business um, as second class to their sales business. So just putting in perspective here, particularly for our American listeners, in Australia and in New Zealand, a lot of real estate officers do sales and property management. Sure, we've got a lot of property management only businesses where business owners just focus on their rent roll, but we've got a lot of businesses that do the both. Now, in America, of course, they've got a lot of property management only businesses, the vast majority. So this is a real problem. And particularly when the boss, um, you know, has come from a sales background, he is a salesperson. And perhaps in those first you know few months or weeks of being a new salesperson working in a real in a real estate business as, as an employee um, you know seeing the problems that property management brings in they get a very bad perception um, that it's stressful it's a problem you don't want to get involved in that but one day they've become a principal um, they're now running their own sales business they're really pumped but now they also by default, need to start up a property management business because the people they're selling properties to are property investors. And he's, well, we've, we've got to get the rent roll started. And, and so, you know, Michael, you know, what can you, what can you add to this, you know, with how, you know, why do business owners see their property management businesses as, as, as second rate? It's always been that um, sales, you know, especially in booming markets, that there was money for jam. You know, a lot of properties were selling themselves, um, sales, a lot of sales agents. And I guess we're generalizing here because there are a lot of fantastic um, operators out there, sales agents. Um, you know, I had one mentor many, 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 many years ago. Uh, he had about uh, 4,000 managements under he was a sales agent and he gave that management department all the love in the world. But generally, because, you know, booming house prices, uh, agents would bring properties on just to park them so they could sell them. And they would, you know, they'd be flexible on fees. Like, you know, in Victoria, I've seen sales agents go down to 2%, 1.5%, 3%, you know, just on management to get it over the line because they know that one day that property will sell and they don't really care what the cost is. But also, Darren, I don't think they appreciate or understand the true cost to manage a property. Mm. Um, but I'm also old school. Darren, I was... You know, my first portfolio was 320 properties, right? We had to do routines. We had to do, we didn't do the leasing aspect, but we did everything else um, around that. And I see now people are arguing over a hundred properties. Mm. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And so then sales agents, sales agents think, well, 
many 200, many 300, but the mm-hmm. systems aren't in place. Mm-hmm. And then there's the burnout. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to put on the table here that property management and sales have different functions in the overall strength of a real estate business. Um, property management is that real business asset. You know, you can borrow against it. It's future asset that you can easily, you know, uh, sell when it's time to cash in your chips and, um, and, and, and very, very valuable as well. It's strong, consistent income with all the management fees and other fees coming in on a regular business that done right and we're focused on proper fee maximization. Um, we can be covering not only all the property management overheads, not, not only just all the property management stuff, but the boss's wages and other top heavy people in the business, you know, that are, you know, managers and so forth as well. It's so powerful. That's its purpose where sales is that cash cow, it's the cream. And so, you know, looking at the both businesses are just as important. And uh, with that is a bit of sadness. I remember, if you remember many years ago, Robert Bevan from Best Practice, um, he did a survey and he was very clear with me one-on-one on what this survey was when he told me, he said, Darren, we did this survey um, with real estate business owners across Australia and New Zealand. And we said, how much time are you spending on your property management in a month compared to sales? And he said, Darren, you want to know what the results were? The average business owner was spending one minute on property management, focusing on property management every month compared to sales. That's shocking. Mm. And I have to say that your focus goes where your, where your heart is. Where your heart is is where your focus goes. So I think that unless we get this bit right, none of the other stuff matters. If you don't get this bit right, your staff in staffing issues and property management, the, the turnover won't stop. You will continue to bleed because unless you focus and want to focus on your property management, you want it to be healthy, it requires the captain of the ship at the wheel. And there's too many ships out there on the ocean where the, there's no one at the wheel. And therefore, the ship is just left to toss and turn on the waves and be blown around by the wind and at the mercy of the tides and all of that. And it hits rocks, you know, and this is what happens when there's not a key driver yeah. you know, at the helm. I, I guess I guess there too, it's, a, it's for another conversation, Darren, but mm. having that property manager head department you know, that remuneration, you know, the, is there equity in there? Is there, you know, well, what's attributed to that role so that that person is, has a vested interest in making sure that department um, succeeds. But we, but we see time in, time out, sales agents are paying someone a salary, a simple salary to run what is the most important asset in the business. Mm. And, you know, again, all leads to burnout and frustration. I'm not paid enough to do this job. <laughs> all right well next one is a lack of big you know the next one off the cab off the rank is a lack of management accountability you know key key performance indicators um across the board on all key areas of performance because you know sometimes property managers can be their own worst enemies and if they're left to at their own devices sometimes those devices aren't good and they get themselves into tangled messes where if we have management accountability over how many routine inspections do they have to do a month um, you know how uh, you know whatever that KPI is um, you know how much is healthy late rent rates um, before we start stepping into those sort of accountability areas there, then it, it's no wonder why the businesses can easily implode or just have those tangled messes because there is a lack of management accountability. So guys, you were, we were talking just recently about KPIs. You know, what do you see when you're working in offices? A lot of people don't have them. Yeah, the lack, you know. Uh, obviously, you know, if it's an office that we're training, we're assisting in putting um, those KPIs in place, especially around the growth. But, um, uh, you know, there's a big demand. People are, are asking, what do I get my property managers to do? Yeah, what- but a, a lot of KPIs that, that are set from, from in offices are thrown out the door when there's staff turnover because... A new staff member comes in. staff member comes on and then they're just, you know, that, that duck on the lake, you know, looking calm at the top, just treading, you know, yeah. kicking furiously <laughs> under the water. 
Yep. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Like so many times, you know, I might have a look at a property management brochure and even they're a dying breed now. Like the, less and less companies are having a property manager brochure because they've got to change it each time there's a new staff member. But what tends to happen as an example on, on, on those, and, and it's through systems and procedures in the office, a new staff member comes in and they, they adapt that, they change it to suit them. I've seen flyers with different fonts and when you're reading it, it's got different, um, there's a different tonality to it because you can see, oh, the, the new person might go, oh, I like that. I'll, I'll keep that, but I'll add this. So there's no flow, you know. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, and then systems and procedures. We were in an office not long ago and we said, you know, why, why, why are you collecting rent like that? Um, because that's what I was taught to do when I first started in real estate. But that was for two offices ago. And then they've come in and implemented that. They haven't asked, what's your process? Mm. Because yeah, that, that particular boss has just employed someone to fill the void, but they haven't trained in their way either. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, we've got, I mean, KPIs, we've got a list of KPIs, mm. um, you know, for lead generation. We've got KPIs for conversion rates, you know, listing rates. We've, so around, you know, in depth around just around rent or growth, there's, um, there's KPIs in performance around the management agreement and onboarding of a new client. There's mm. uh, applications. There's the ingoing inspection. There's the sign-up process. There is then the general management. And we've got repairs and late rent. We've got lease renewals, inspections, repair, and, and all of the day-to-day -day management. Then, of course, the vacating procedure as well. So we've got to have in-depth KPIs um, and a KPI, of course, is a benchmark. Was this particular uh, uh, um, task performed correctly or not? And and having a figure or some sort of benchmark to know, yes, it has or it hasn't. Is the light green or is the light red? And it's just having those, but it's also having the resources each month to be able to measure from a management point of view, measure those KPIs to make sure that have been met. So we know what red lights that we've got. And a red light simply means on an issue or a task not done right, we've got to be focusing on turning them to green. So we just, our goal is to have green lights across the board mm -hmm. um, and measured on a monthly basis. Um, you know, having that one-on-one -on -one with property managers at least 30, month, 30 minutes in a month um, a one-on-one -on -one going through those KPIs is really important and it, it really does keep things in the green. That's what we want. We want that health. We want that strength. We want that pumping rent roll, growing business and KPIs tell us if, if the actual business is healthy or not. All right, moving on. So um, I think a lack of value from the boss, you know, particularly around... Um, it not willing to sack clients. You know, if a property manager comes in and says, you know, I, I need we need to get rid of such and such, we've always got to look at it. But too many property managers bring a genuine case to the boss. We need to get rid of this guy because he's abusing us, he's bullying us, um, he won't repair his property, he's causing us all sorts of issues or whatever. And, and, and business owners just um, brushing that away and saying stuff like, well, they might just want to sell one day. Saying that to a property manager with a genuine situation is a real punch in the guts. And um, you, you just take away from the loyalty that they have. And again, all of this contributes to, uh, to, to, to burnout. Um, I think a lack of promotion opportunities as well. We've just got a rent roll that's not looked after um, and it's not pumping, it's not growing. Then there's very little promotion prospects for any or any of those team members. Yeah, it's quite... It's quite hard in smaller offices. Like, where do you where do you grow? Like, how do you if there's a senior property manager, and the portfolio is kind of just staying in a certain amount of properties? How do you grow? Like, mm. you, you can't unless that person leaves. There's and then the business owner isn't chomping on any other opportunity. What do you do? Right, you, there, there is uh, the, the growth of the business. So you got senior prop managers, but also another solution here is coming in with um, good commission structures um, that. Um, put in place. So for example, they've you've got a base salary plus a percentage, it could be one or two percent of total fee income. That's management fees, leasing fees, lease renewal fees, routine inspection fees, or whatever. And now there's 10 different ways 
that that property manager can be putting in a pay rise for themselves because there's so many different ways that we could be increasing the income, you know, making sure that we've got minimal vacancies, making sure that we've got minimal renteries, making sure that we're maximizing the rents, making sure that we're not getting, you know, doing discounts on deals. So all of this affects income. So perhaps if there isn't the promotional opportunities, there is promotional opportunities for the property manager to increasing their income. And that in a lot of ways, if they know that I can continue to be increasing my income, um, has a real stickability about it um, because they just want to get earned more and more and more. And once they learn those 10 different ways that they can be giving themselves a pay increase if they're getting percentage of total fee income, whatever that is, um, and that can be a real solution too if if the boss isn't going to be making a person a senior or bringing in a department manager or a leasing manager or, you know, areas and, and opportunities in the future there. Um, alrighty, I think another area of burnout is um, the inability um, for property managers to take annual leave um, and take sick leave. Now, everyone's thinking, well, they can, but in their mind, can they really take quality time off? Michael, what do you think? I think everyone should be able to take quality time off, but um, everyone's programmed to stay connected. I mean, I, I take time off, but like I, I love being being connected because I love what I do. Um, but in property management, there should be no reason why you should be on holiday thinking, oh, the plumbing at one Smith Street, oh, the roof at you know yeah. two Red Street. You should be able to switch off, and the office should be able, the office should be adequately set up. Correct. Manage when someone is gone. There should be no reason why someone has to take the home work home. That's management accountability is where, sorry, you are switching off. You won't be taking any calls. We'll be looking after emails. Please go and have quality time off. But we know that doesn't happen. And so what also happens, property managers get pressured because that no one is actually looking after their portfolio or other team members are now taking up the slack um, and they get worried. They get anxious. And of course, when they get back, They've got problems and issues and complications that are now landed on their lap and burning when they get back to work. Um, and they think me taking a holiday just wasn't worthwhile. Dennis that never adds to the burnout. Dennis never worried when he left the office. He would go to Jarvis Beach in his bikini or his mankini and he would just forget about the office. And he knew that the guys in the office were going to take care of everything. Listen, if I had to meet someone in a bikini shop to sign up the deal, I'd do it, okay, or on the beach. It didn't matter. New business is new business. And you're right. I did stop everything and run for that new client. <laughs> it is a, another result of burnout. And this is where we're just getting into bosses that just focus on sales and they really don't care. And they're saying to the prop managers, just go and sign up the business, give discounts, undercut. Let's just go low on our management fees or whatever. But it has an impact on the fee income of the business and property managers, even if they're working in a discount fee business, they won't accept discount wages. And it just doesn't work. It has a negative reactive effect. And so we can't pay our staff quality if we are allowing discounts to occur. Um, and that also rolls out, Michael, how does it affect the business health um, with a lack of income around resources, what impact does it have? There's no room for growth, right? Like you, you want to be able to have the resources to train your staff, to send them to events, to you know give them that room to grow professionally and personally. And when there are no resources available, when when there's no money coming into the business, mm. that person stagnates. Mm. Can, can you imagine an athlete, a runner? Let's just say they're a marathon runner. And they have to perform running. That's an analogy for a business. But that runner takes a brick and, and, and in the morning drops it on his feet and takes a brick next day, drops it on his feet. It's going to impact his performance in what he's meant to do. But that brick is when we discount our fee income. Yep. This is what happens. Not having quality fees damages the performance of our team. We can't pay them well, which means we can't attract good people and keep good people and we can't resource them. We can't give them quality computer systems. We can't give them quality vehicles. We can't give them, you know, quality things and we definitely can't train them. So, in fact, we're damaging and impacting our business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the lack of training can do that, Darren. It's like... Um 
you know, you, you, you're bringing in new staff, right? Or, or how many people are, are contacting us about wanting new staff to come on board, right? There, there, there's a lot of people that are struggling to find new staff. And we're always telling people, promote that you do training, promote that you're part of IGT, promote that you're going to start, um, you know, that you, you it comes with training and support, et cetera. It, it's like a new staff member, they feel like, you know, those... Um, you go to those kitty gyms, like the the bounce and slides and all that, and they've got those those um, big um, the what are those big areas, and they've got all the balls in it, right? It's like saying, okay, you, Darren, I'm employing you to be a leasing agent, but before you got to be a leasing agent, you got to get all the blue balls out. You're not allowed to do anything until you get all the blue balls out because there's so much mess going on and and the chasing. So you know you want to be able to have staff coming in with full freedom. To, to, to knowing that they've got training, be excited, having the right culture. And when there's high staff turnover, the culture gets affected. You don't want staff having to come in and, and play the red tape, take the balls out of the, the thing, just jump in and yep. go for it. Yep. All right. I'm putting another big issue on the table because we've got to keep on going with this. So a lot of businesses just have no criteria with the type of owners and properties coming in. So um, an eight point, and uh, sorry, Dennis, am I missing out on something there? <laughs> Looks like you're about to start laughing. <laughs> I'm always right. starting to laugh. Don't worry. You're distracting me. All right, let's keep on going. So uh, officers don't have any criteria of what they should say no to with new business and clients. So if, if we've simply, you know, uh, this is my, my very well-known famous throwaway line, um, you know, don't just take on any roof and front door have criteria. And I'm always saying, people, you must stop doing property management. You must stop it. You must run from it. You must flee from it. We've got to stop doing property management and start doing quality, profitable property management, because that's a much better option. And, and that starts with having a criteria. And we've got an eight point benchmark uh, that we teach people that when a property comes in, it's got to be examined against its criteria of what a quality property is. And there's eight different things. And we'll do a whole podcast on these eight things coming up. We haven't got time to go through it now. But what we end up happening, we don't have a criteria of what we should be saying no to because it's something they're saying we, we identify what's quality and profitable, um, we end up with too many what we call C-class landlords. And very quickly, the seven characteristics are um, they're, they're unreasonable and over-demanding, which means they, they erode your staff and they upset your staff. They take up too much of your time, so it wears down your, re your resources. Time is a resource. Um, whatever the rent is, they want more, which means you've got properties which – just remain vacant or they only attract the type of tenants we don't want and don't want to pay the rent. They just want to screw you down in your fees. So that impacts your fee income. Um, they don't, they put little to no money into the property. So they don't keep the upkeep, which means it ends up just attracting a bad tenant. Yeah. And bad tenants is just bad all around. And the last one, the number seven, is they typically have low rent properties, which mm. means we end up with a lesser quality tenant in a lot of ways, but also lesser fee income. And all the time, it just ends up costing us so much of our time just to manage these. And these have the greatest impact on our staff when we've got C-class landlords. They're yeah, like a packet of cigarettes. What I like to say, Dennis, give me two mm. secs, They're like a packet of cigarettes, and they take years off the life of your staff. Yeah. I'm just adding to that, right? And, and when the systems and procedures aren't set correctly and the, there's high staff turnover, um, the rest of the team around, they, they tend to take shortcuts just to get the job done. Mm. You know, that's where little those checklists aren't getting done. You know, we've, we've been into multiple agencies and they've got checklists, but they're not getting followed anymore. Right, because the people are just—they just start cutting the corners to get the jobs done. They're not fully qualified for it, and then when they take on these properties that you're referring to, mm. it, it just—it just keeps snowballing, mm. you know. And, and then a pandemic comes along, and everyone's just like, "Oh, I get that's it. I'm selling," because something gets in the way, and they don't know that, that you know there's there's things that can be done to to fix these things, mm. you know. But mm. um, pa panic sets in. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and, and of course, allowing the wrong type of properties to come in as well. So when I'm doing health checks with businesses, one of the things we do is we pull out the property list 
And as a team, we go through, okay, how many long distance properties do we have that take more than 30 minutes of sitting in a car, which means we're not managing property, 30 minutes in the car to drive somewhere or more. Um, what, you know, how many furnished properties have we got? Because if we're not holiday letting or doing student accommodation or doing Airbnb, we've got a question, why do we need furniture? Because it just adds to the wear and tear and the complications of the property management process. You know, the wrong type of properties, are they flats? Are they units? Are they the sort of type of property that attracts a certain type of tenant? We're gonna be looking at, do we really, you know, should we be managing those um, low quality properties? properties that are in a poor state of repair um, or in the wrong part of town. Of course, for our Americans, um, you know, we're judging properties on their, you know, their socio demographics. You obviously have uh, laws around discrimination. So we're going to be very careful with using that particular criteria. Um, but it just goes on and on and on. So we end up finding in a business one of the issues and problems in that ball and chain effect is they've taken on too many bad clients too many bad properties and they got that 30, 40, 50% of their rent roll is toxic. Mm. And when it's toxic, it creates an environment not fit for human habitation. And when your staff are drinking polluted water with this toxicity in it, they're working in a rent roll that's toxic, this creates the sickness and it creates the burnout. And so what we've got to do, bringing in that criteria in um, to, uh, to say no to certain properties, we're actually stopping the toxic at the gate. Now, you might think, well, what, Darren, what do I do with my toxic properties we've already got? Well, this is where we've got to get good on growth, Dennis. This is where the growth comes in. We've got to get our strong net growth coming in of quality properties coming in. And for every for every two quality properties coming in, we exit one bad one. And so this is where we create that worst first list. We go through and we work out, okay, what are our toxic properties? But what are the worst 10? And then we put them onto a hit list. And then as we bring in that quality management, we exit those out the back and bit by bit, we're growing in quality and health and fee income. And, and, and the business is um, just getting healthy and healthier with every um, property that's exited out the back. <laughs> I've sort of dominated here, guys. You but, have. You know, <laughs> I feel like the third wheel between you two. <laughs> that's cool, I but... feel like the fourth wheel. No, but, I mean, <laughs> one, one, like we touched on before, Darren, a lot of agencies um, who aren't property management focused will bring on any type of property. I'll bring on the C-class, D-class, E-class landlords. And um, because they, they just see it, you'll be okay to deal with them. You're in a people business. You'll be right to deal with them. But are they giving the staff the training to deal with landlords like that? Or are they assuming that the team member knows how to deal with landlords like that? Right? Again, adds to burnout, adds to frustration. Boss doesn't appreciate what I'm doing. I'm not paid enough. I should be in another role. I should be a manager. I should, I should be running this business. But again, that just comes down to expectations. And going back to the beginning, have you set your team up the right way? Mm. Do they know the tasks that they should be doing? Is it clearly identified? Do you have your KPIs all, all, all set up so there's no question about who's doing what? When the new person comes on, are you making sure that those tasks that everyone was helping out with has been passed back to the person, uh, to the new person? You know, a lot of these things aren't being done. Yeah, I agree. But I think the end result of all of this is that good property managers don't want to work in these types of businesses. You, you, you want to do good property management, but if we're not getting these things right, property managers now have options, good property managers. Um, they're, um, I mean, property, good property managers are either leaving through burnout, they're leaving the industry altogether, or they're moving to an agency where they will get looked after and paid well, and the boss values property management, or the third option we're seeing now a lot more is that property managers are starting up their own business from home. Mm. This is what's happening now. So we're just imploring to the business owners and the managers listening to this. If you want good staff, of course you do. You've got to have a good culture and environment for them to work in for overall strong team performance. We want to see you doing well. We want to see it growing well. And this is where... Um, the business health check identifies your key issues that are stopping you get to that top performance for your business because that's what we want to see. And we just want to invite, if you want to have a chat to us about this, uh, about how we can 
Um, look at and examine your business and look at, identify what the issues are, what do the tangles look like and what things that you can be doing to turn the ship around um, and to make that business and take it to where you want to take it with growth and strength and fee income and all that stuff, just go to igtbusinesshealthcheck.com. That's igtbusinesshealthcheck.com. Um, get in touch with us. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to um, have a chat to you about your situation and, and um, then start, you know, start working on some solutions and talk about what we can do. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's a really good, um, that's a really good podcast. I think we've covered a lot of material there. Um, you know, we don't want to see staff burnout. That's why we've started because this is the big one. Um, and this podcast series, we're going to be really getting into and dealing and going deep into the tangles and problems at Kinder Performance. So you can identify, relate to that. And of course, you know, we'll be giving you solutions so you can do something about that. So thanks, everyone. I know this podcast has probably been a bit longer than what we would like, but it's our pilot. It's our first one. We want to get it right. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. I think we've done a great job today and um, look forward to getting everyone on board for the next podcast. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.